Okay, welcome everyone. This is a pre-Pesach shiur preparation for up, upcoming holiday in Pesach. Thank you very much, everyone who came. I wanted to start learning about Pesach, actually, from the very end. Going backwards. After the Seder, there is a song that we sing. What is that song? Okay. Who knows one? Who knows one? Who knows one? After the whole Seder, at the very end, <clears throat> who knows one? Over there, we ask 13 questions. Who knows one? We answer, I know one. One is Hashem. Hi, you there. Welcome back. Today we brought sushi on time, so... Oh, wow. So it's gone. No, it's still It's there. So, question is, what is the underlying, the hidden point in that story, in that song? In that song? Yes, we go through the basics of Judaism. One is Hashem, two is Luchot, which is Torah, three is our forefathers, four is our foremothers which is the basic, your father, your mother. Then there's discussion of the Torah, for example. Five is the oh. sif, uh, sifre, uh, the Sfarim of the Torah. Chamisha oh. Chomshed Torah. Uh, six is uh, six uh, the uh, Sadarim of Mishnah. Uh, seven is seven days a week. Uh, eight is Brit Milah, and so on. These are all basic things. But why... Do we choose to say this song at the end of Pesach? Why do we sing it at the end of Pesach? And once I heard an answer that after the Seder, after you prepared for Pesach, you cooked for Pesach, you <clears throat> set your table, you gathered all your friends and family, and you did everything you're supposed to do, at the end of the day, at late at night, if someone wakes you up and tells you, what is one? You can't say one. Uh, one is... Uh, one my uh, number one thing on the list that I have to do tomorrow morning. That's number one. Uh, number two is the second thing I have to do. That's why he planned of action for tomorrow. No. What is one? One is Hashem. Everything's connected to... Like everything you see through... You have to understand. You have to be so integrated into Judaism. You have to be so into Torah, into um, Hashem, that one is Hashem now. And two, what is two? You'll say two, maybe two is my two uh, shoes that I just bought right before Pesach, Right. This is this. This is my two pairs of uh, the, the pair of shoes that I love so much. No, two is shnei lachot. Is two uh, ta- tablets, and so on. How do we achieve this level? How do we get to this level? So, if we were to analyze Pesach, we would come, we would arrive with the fi- following conclusion. That Pesach really consists of two major parts. Pesach consists of two parts. What are they? Who can tell me what Pesach consists of? Getting. And I'll give you an example. Freedom, freedom. First one, an easy one, and the next one is a hard one. Getting liberated and getting the Torah. No, no, Torah is Shavuot. Shav- shav- Remembering the miracles Hashem made for us. And the the second one? Or first one? Freedom, like going free. The fact that we... we Try to to analyze. Logically speaking, logically speaking. We have always in our Torah a dynamic. If I had to ask you, what is dynamic in life? Versus evil. Good, versus good, good versus evil. That's number one. Then they have, a, if we go a little bit deeper, even in good, there's a dynamic. Even in good, there is a dynamic. 
we have right and left hand. Each one symbolizes something, right? Yeah. Shalom, what does right symbolize? Chesed. And the left? Gvura. Meaning that we have an approach of kindness and easygoing and uh, giving. Or we have a left symbolizes toughness and uh, uh, strictness and so on. So uh, in our Torah, we also have two parts. Mitzvot. No, in this from from six hundred mitzvot, we have all the mitzvot that are divided into two major parts. Mitzvot ase, mitzvot lot ase. Mitzvot ase means to do something. Lot ase means not to do something. Believe it in the lot in Pesach, we have these two mitzvot. What are they? Yeah, not to eat chametz and to eat matzah. Thank you very much. So, <coughs> not to eat chametz and to eat matzah. <coughs> how does that? How does that play itself out? How do you see that? You're right. And I called one easy and one hard. One easy and one hard. Eating matzah is the hard part. No, not eating, not eating comments the hard part. What? I'll explain to you. I'll explain to you. It says in Pasuk in Tehillim, Sur mera v'asetov, go away from evil and then do good. Go away from evil and do good. So, our Chachon teaches that these are the two steps in Avodat Hashem. First, you try to clean yourself of evil or anything bad. And afterwards, you only could start doing good. For example, let's say a person uh, is uh, busy uh, working seven days a week. Can he connect to Hashem? The answer no. He has to stop working on Shabbat. When he stops, uh, when he changes in his, in his head a, um, a, a perception that he could continue working on Shabbat, only then he could get, start getting close to Hashem. So first stop doing something bad, then your kiddush is going to be different. Then your tefillah is going to be different. Uh, if a person is uh, eating non-kosher, can he really connect to Hashem? The answer is no. Because the Allah is, if you're eating non-kosher, can you make a bracha? No. So you can't make a bracha. So first, stop eating non-kosher, then you could get a mitzvah bracha. Believe it or not, Hashem told us that I want you to approach Pesach in two stages. First, you gotta get rid of Hametz. Okay. But you can't stop there. After that, you have to eat Matzah. So you're changing your dietary status. You are not, eat, not eating something and you're eating something else. Now, eating Matzah doesn't just mean that this is your food for, for duration of Pesach. Eating Matzah is a mitzvah. According to Vilna Gaon, for example, it misses for entire seven days, right? In Chutzlar, it's eight days. Misses to eat matzah. On the first two nights, it's a chiyuv to eat matzah. You're obligated to eat matzah. But as uh, subsequent nights, you uh, you still get a mitzvah. What kind of mitzvah is this? What does it teach you? It's mitzvah aseh. It's a positive mitzvah to believe in Hashem, to believe in the events that happened. 3,000 years ago, more than 3,000 years ago, to believe that God took us out of Egypt and that God is all-powerful because then, well, that's when he demonstrated that he is so powerful. But we can't really tap into this belief. We can't really start until we cleanse ourselves of chametz. And Misha says very well that ego, ego is in the way of realizing that God is all-powerful. <clears throat> ego is blocking our understanding. So we have to get rid of ego, we have to get rid of our desires, we have to get rid of our um, desire for material advancements and, and so much so much of the physical world and become very simple like matzah. Matzah is just uh, flour and water and that's when the realization that Hashem is one sinks in very well. So what is easier, to get rid of chametz or to eat matzah? 
According to this, according to this. Getting rid of Hametz is easy. Why? Because all you have to do is just stop doing something. We'll see soon, we'll see soon that it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not easy, right? But physically speaking, on the super, superficially, to get, get, getting rid of uh, chametz, you just clean out your home and you check the house and you burn it. And we're going to dedicate first, a little bit first, uh, half of this class to that. And after that comes a uh, new mitzvah. At the night of Pesach comes a mitzvah of eating matzah, which includes in it not just eating matzah. What's including in the mitzvah asel of eating matzah? <laughs> there are other mitzvot. Okay? Michael is disturbing a little bit. Okay. So maybe just, just sit down and listen to the show. Okay? So, uh, because everyone is smiling in your camera. So it's, it's kind of like a... So, eating in, in the mitzvah of mitzvah of eating matzah, we also have mitzvah to talk about going out from Egypt, uh, drinking for kosot, saying Haggadah, rejo- saying Hallel, rejoicing. All those things that we do after we clean our home from Hametz, they are all part of eating, eating matzah, the way I call it, eating matzah, because, because once you got rid of chametz and you did lota uh, aseh, then you are uh, starting to do aseh. Now, according to Hasidim, they learn this pasuk very differently. They learn, sur merava asetov, go away from evil and do good. You should be so busy with good that you don't have time to do evil. It's not like I explained to you, delineated right now. There's two steps, two steps, two stages. You do one, and then you do the second one. No, they say maybe it's impossible for us to do the first one. Maybe impossible. But once you uh, do good, you have to. Uh, once you do good, you are automatically getting rid of evil. Okay. But the way the basic Rishonim and Rambam learn that there's two steps. Okay. This brings us to the halakha. First of all, we are supposed to get our homes clean for Pesach and we start B'dikat Hametz. When do we start B'dikat Hametz this year? Yeah. This is the night, which is uh, April 4th. Uh, April 4th at night, right? April 5th is uh, Erev Pesach. We're supposed to check for Hametz 24 hours before Pesach starts, night before. There's a question, when do we start uh, checking for Hametz in our home? So, so uh, Shki is actually wrong. Sedek Chavim, when three stars come out. When three stars come out. It's supposed to be already dark outside. Shki is when the sun just starting to set. It's still light outside. It's supposed to be already dark. There's a question, therefore, what's the, if the Mitzvah of Jigat Hametz is at Sedek Chavim, then there is a uh, question. Has to do with Aravit. Marv. What's the question? Do you down first? And then what do you do first? Do you down first or do you check your. Because there's two mitzvot at the same time. They start at the same time. What do you do more frequently? So the, the rule is whatever, you, whatever mitzvah is more frequent, you do first. What is more frequent in this case? Aravit. So you have to pray, try to pray first, and then do the Dikat Chamez. What time is Tzedek on April 4th? 7.53. An hour after sunset. Or after sunset. Well, yeah. About that time. Good. So now, we've checked our homes. Our homes are clean from, for Pesach. And uh, our Hametz is in a designated place. In designated place. And we annulled Hametz that we didn't see. Now, next morning, we're supposed to do two things. If you look in the calendar, it says next morning, eat Hametz before 10.22 and burn Hametz before 11.40. What does that mean? mean? Eat Hametz before 10.22. What if I want to eat Hametz at 12 o'clock in the afternoon? (coughs) Who could tell me what time to eat Hametz? 
what is this? In Hamed's on the calendar, it says in Hamed's before 1022 on April 5th. Now we're talking about Erev Pesach. And Burn Hamed's before 1140. After you annul your Hamed's, you're going to eat what you left aside, I guess, right? You annul at night after Badika. Right. But at night after Badika, you annul only what you didn't see. You could, you could, you could, but meaning you're right, you can't eat it, you don't have to, but you could. I will raise your hand if you don't eat hamas on the morning of Pesach. Everyone eats. Everyone else does. Oh, Shalom is the only one who does it. Shalom, we give you a lot of credit. No, we're talking about halakhically, not with personal, not personal. Halakhically, you don't have to eat hamas. You don't have to. Halakhically, you're allowed to eat hamas. How is it that you're allowed when you're burning it and you're... No, no, no. Let's say I want to have a bagel You mean, uh, why does it say, yeah, why does it say in the, in, in the calendar, eat chamez by 1022? Maybe I don't want to eat chamez. Like it sounds like a mitzvah. You got to eat chamez. <laughs> so, so he says, you don't have to eat it. But the reason why it says in the, in the halacha, eat chamez by 1022, because minhag of all the Jews is to eat chamez on Erev Pesach in the morning. That's how it is. It says in the halacha, no hagin, that people eat it. A blessed one, blessed so that Oh, really? So breakfast you have, meaning after chakras, you have your it's breakfast or whatever. Yes. Uh-huh. Didn't we learn it has to be something before chatzot, before midday? I remember you did a calendar out last year. And we were looking at... That's what uh, this calendar is here. I don't want to go... Last year, I got, went really in detail in right. here. Today, I'm going to touch upon it a little bit, right? So now... Why does it say that we eat chametz before 10.22? And here I would like to look with you in Shulchan Aruch, the page that you have in front of you. It says, Siman Tav Mem Gimel 443, Din chametz Ba'er Pesach La'achar Sheish. What's the law of chametz on Ere Pesach after six, sixth hour? Sixth hour. So we need to first figure out why we call it sixth hour. I mean, does it mean six o'clock in the afternoon? No. No, no we're not talking about six o'clock in the afternoon. We're not talking about six o'clock in the morning either. So what are we talking about? Who can tell me? You divide the day into, into 12, and then it's the sixth hour. So the first moment of sunrise is zero, and next minute is 0. 0.1. Then we have 60, 60 minutes. And we call it first hour. Then another 60 minutes, we call it second hour. Basically, we take the sun light day from Netzach Hamad to Shkia, and we divide it in 12 equal parts. That's why it's more than the maximum. So we're in, if you have 12 equal parts with hour number one in the beginning, hour number 12 at the end, where does six belong on that chart? In the middle. Six is exactly the middle. So when we say... Midday, correct. So six in Jewish understanding is midday or, or, or midnight. Chatzot Laila or Chatzot Yom. You could divide night hours, night time also into six. That's we the do. right, right? The sixth hour. That's okay, one sixth. second. One at a time. What are, you, what are you saying? Is that the right hour? But what exactly? That you can eat it with, until the sixth hour. Oh, one second. Let's just modify no, what you're saying. It says over here, okay. let's start reading. We didn't read it yet. Mark, I think you are more advanced than us, so you are jumping ahead a little bit. Let's first figure it out. For right now, I just read the title. It says, Chametz on Erev Pesach at six hours. We didn't, didn't read yet the law. Right. Anyone has an extra sheet? Let's yes. Give it to <clears throat> Good, we have a few oh, sheets. Yeah. We have sheets for everyone. Right, right. Okay, so we're reading the Halakha. Chametz Meshei Sha'ot. Who can translate that? Chametz Meshei Sha'ot. The sixth, the Chametz of the sixth hour. Meshei, Meshei Sha'ot. From, From the sixth hour. Vilemala and above and on. And onward. Biyom Arba'asar on the 14th of Nisan, which is Erev Pesach. Erev Pesach. We're not talking about Pesach yet. We're talking about day before Pesach. Asur Bahana'a is prohibited even to derive pleasure from it. Mm. And it says over here, Afilu Hamsoshal Enu Yudi Asur Lehen Not Mimenu. Even if it's Goiz Hametz, we're not allowed to derive pleasure from it. And uh, deriving pleasure means not just eating it, 
but having any type of benefit from it. Give me examples of benefiting from chametz. Selling, Anybody? Profit. Selling it to a goy. You profited from it, right? Uh, what else? Feeling giving it to your animals, good. What about passing by a bakery and smell it? Same thing. You pass by by a bakery and you smell it. It's also it's just like on Pesach. It's a sur. It says it very clearly uh, in uh, Halacha. Ben Ishchai says that you know to smell on Pesach. Intentionally, obviously. Right? Intentionally, right? If you can't help it, you just you happen to be near. Every day right. Like pizza. Right. Right. Good. good. So. From the sixth hour and on, it's asur be hanaa. It's, it's prohibited to, to, benefit. to benefit from it. So we discussed this. So if you look over here on this chart, we have exactly a beautiful chart that has on the bottom the hours, the English and the American way of counting hours. You see, over here, Netzach Hamad, the beginning is at 6, 6 p.m. And uh, the uh, Shkia is 6, uh, 6 a.m., is next time and Sishki at 6 p.m. And then we have our number one, two, three, four, five, six chatzot. This is as a chatzot, which is midday. Then our seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. This is the second half of the day uh, after chatzot. When is chametz prohibited on Erev Pesach? From chatzot, from sixth end of sixth hour and on. Question to you, Rabotai. Why is it prohibited at time? Oh, question to me, yes. Yes, after we change the clock, it's one. According to this, according to this chart, that the sunrise at 7 a. 6 a.m., so then Chatzot is 12. But if uh, today is earlier, that's why it happens. every hour is longer, so it comes out that later. This is not, this is not uh, true for every day. This is only true for the day where Sunset, sun ro rose only at 6 a.m. And sun set exactly 12 hours later, 6 p.m. It's just for educational purposes. But it changes from day to day. <clears throat> so question is, why is Chametz uh, uh, is a source so early? For example, on Erev Pesa, on Erev Yom Kippur, I'm allowed to eat till Yom Kippur starts. Why am I not allowed to eat Chametz on Erev Pesa after six hours before that? And also, is it Midarait or Midarabanan? Who says? So, Mish says Midra Bonon. No, because Oh, the rabbi has added something, but this is not this six hours. No. So, Rabbi, it's Asur Midra Raita. It's Asur from the Torah. And uh, it's not because you have uh, Hametz in your system and your body somewhere when you're waiting for it to clear away. No, it's, uh, that's not true. But, is the Pasuk in the Torah? That you're not allowed to shecht korban pesach and own chametz or derive okay. pleasure from chametz. Okay. And we shecht korban pesach, right? Lot tishchetu al chametz dam zivchi. It was the busiest day in the temple, right? It was the busiest day in the temple. And every Jew had to bring, every family had to bring sheep, one year old sheep. It's called korban pesach. And if you didn't bring it, by the way, there is like big punishment. What's the punishment for some person who didn't? Karet. We never have an example of someone didn't do mitzvah and he gets karet. So a person decided not to give, not to bring Korban Pesach one year, he gets cut out, boom. Brismila is another example, good. <clears throat> but Brismila, at least, you could do it. You could make it up. Or you could do it. If, you, if your entire life passed and you didn't make it, you get cut out. But over here, if I'm, no, Pesach is for those who couldn't do it. They were Tameh or they were... But someone on purpose didn't do it, decided not but to do it. But where do we get the sixth hour from? That's the rabbis. It's now, sixth hour, it says in the Torah, we ushchatu oto kol adat kahal Israel ben arbaim. You have to shecht, every Jew has to shecht it on Erev Pesach before Yom Tov starts. Yeah, they, there is a Mishnah in Psachim that explains that they had uh, groups of, they were allocated time, they would come in in uh, uh, groups and they would shecht it. The entire Erev Pesach was busy with Shechting Korban Pesach for the entire Jewish people. And uh, then after they Shechted it, they would take it to their lodging place. It was in the vicinity of Yerushalayim. It was supposed to eat it in Yerushalayim. And each one uh, was uh, preparing for Seder. At night, they made Kiddush. They were eating Arba Kosot. They were drinking Arba Kosot, eating Matzah. And they ate Korban Pesach that they Shechted in a row. So they would cook it? 
Yeah. Yeah. Before, before uh, uh, sunset, or they would leave it That's cooking it as they're doing the seder? Just like logistically, how would that work? So say so you had to go do your carbon, and then you have to bring it back to your tent, right? And it's already like 5, 6 p.m. Right. And the seder's about to start, right? Right. Um, but then you have to take the meat, give it to your wife or whatever, so she can put it on the grill, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you, you would it, leave it there right away because at a best you start. So it would cook while you're right doing while you're making seder. Yes. Rabbi, the matzah uh -huh. back in the day was like well, was like a lot because you're allowed to cook on, on Yom Tov. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, if it's Shabbat, if sometimes Pesach Thursday Pesach comes out on Shabbat, then you have to cook it before. Seriously. If you finish it cooking it before. It was like lavash, lavash, right? It was, that's what I'm saying. It was, it was like a shawarma lafa. But, what they but had. the fellow wasn't there. It was just the men, right? Female, male, uh, women. No, no, when we were in the Pesach. Well, what about it? There was no family there. It was just family. Men. Of course, not Seder. No. The men brought the carbon. If you didn't bring your family, you are in the wrong business, wrong religion. In fact, you had to. You have to. You, you're talking about Beth uh, Hamikdash itself. Um, maybe, maybe Beth Hamikdash. I thought you were saying in Shalem to eat to make a Seder. The Seder family. As long as you send in your sheep, or send send in your um, your people would appoint themselves to eat from the. They had to do it beforehand. I I'm going to be with you. In, I'm going to have part in your sheep, and you send it in. You send it in, and they shechted. They give you money. Yeah, you could. You don't have to. The child doesn't have to go there. That the children and we, the wife don't have to go to bed in that. <coughs> you could stay home to wait for it and, do, and then you bring the car and the meat. That day, that night. Stay the night. You know, you have to eat it in the Shalai. You can't eat it outside the Shalai. So the whole Jewish nation was in Jerusalem. It was in Jerusalem at the end of the time. What if you couldn't make it into the Shalai? Huh? Then you have Vesach Shani. Oh, that's Vesach Shani. The people are guarding the borders and. That's the fish. They didn't even. They still have peace out, right? But for Kurban, yeah. Kurban, right? Think about it back then. Rabbi, I have a question. Yeah. Could we have. We have. Um, we have. We have two hours. One is eating and one is burning, right? Right. So. We're getting, we're getting to this. Oh. We're getting to this shortly. I'm that saying those two hours are from the Torah. No, the, the so burning is from the Torah. But the eating, that's yeah, yeah. the Rabbana, no? Uh, no. Let's, let's, let's figure this out. Uh, Rabbi let's continue our halacha. So, so far we said that six hours before the beginning of Pesach, from Chatzot, another Pesach, we're already not allowed to eat chametz. And no work. We're continuing. Vaasru Chachamim Shte Shawot Kodem. Let's translate this. Vaasru Chachamim. Who can tell me what that means? And it was forbidden by the rabbis. Chachamim as a prohibited Shte Shawot Kodem. Two hours. Two hours before that. So according to the chart, I'm, this you're gonna answer. Four o'clock. According to that, what did what did rabbis do? The rabbis pushed the last chametz to the end of the first hour. The four, I'm sorry, the end of the fourth hour. So if in our example, 6 a.m. is the first hour, then by 10 a.m., you have to be done with your meal, with your uh, comments. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Then it continues and it says, Mihu, <coughs> kol sha... Then it says like this. Mihu, kol sha'a chamishit mutar bahano. However, the entire fifth hour... It's permissible benefit. to benefit. Uh -huh. How could we explain that? When I say it's asur for two hours, <coughs> which means fourth and fifth hour, mm -hmm. but it's permissible on fifth hour. It's permissible to benefit. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. I want. You ju I just said that it's prohibited. Now I'm saying it's permissible. Well, what am I saying? To eat is forbidden by the fourth, but you can still benefit up to the fifth. By the because you can't put a, a gaze, uh, What's it called? Uh, Zero. No, not a gazer. The rabbis put like a a wall on the wall, right? Basically, like so they make fence. A fence on a fence, right? See it. See That's why. That's not an example of fence on the fence. Basically, chachamim were 
lenient on us. They said, you're not allowed to eat it for these two hours that were prohibited, but you're only not allowed to benefit only for one hour. But the Torah says within six hours, eating or benefiting, correct? You can sell your stocks until Torah 12. says from, 12 you can sell your stocks. from Chatzot, you're not allowed well, to benefit. It says 11, fifth hour. Torah says, Torah, hour. Torah. Fifth hour. That's, that's 11th hour, you can still sell your stocks. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. till 12. Uh -huh. Yeah, so what was your question? I want to answer your question. My question was, Michelle, why yeah. is it Why is it that... So, I, I, I was under the assumption that you could eat up until the fourth hour based on the rabbi's uh, prohibition, right? But you could benefit on, up until the end of the fifth hour. Why? Because the Torah says you can't benefit or eat from the sixth hour on. So, so the rabbi is... When, when you say from the sixth hour on, you mean the beginning of sixth hour or end of sixth hour? End of sixth hour and on. Correct, good. Including the sixth hour, right? Not including the sixth hour. Not including the sixth hour. So you, the Torah says, the Torah you can says eat from until, use the English. Okay, until noon you can eat. Correct? Torah says only from twelve you'll not. Right, like so it. until the end of the sixth hour. Good. Including the sixth hour. The rabbis say you cannot eat past ten a.m. Good. Right? But you can benefit up until eleven a.m. Correct. But why can't if you could benefit and eat? So why is it that you can only eat until ten a.m. but you could benefit until eleven a.m.? Excellent question. The answer is What's the difference? meaning why are they more lenient or more strict on eating versus more lenient on, on, on I mean depending on how you look at it. Okay, good. Because as far as eating, you could actually make a mistake for two hours. Uh huh. You could you could make it two hours, and eating is more Inclusive, stringent. Like, stringent, yeah, stringent. stringent. Mm -hmm. So they they uh, were make all to allow us to sell it in this hour, even though we're not allowed to eat it, but we they would make all about it. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> you want to eat all the time? Still not allowed to eat it uh, in these two hours. <laughs> these two hours are prohibited to eat, right? right? I, 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 think it's, it's, I think it makes sense. We just... I have a question. Saying, because like, the yeah. cooling down around like animalistic nature of wanting to eat, so... In the gradual... So in the gradual. Say if we allow you to eat until like when the tour stops, you're going to... I mean... Then you mentioned Yom Kippur. It's like why didn't why didn't they why did they allow us to eat until like uh, yeah that's that's an interesting question. It should have also kind of. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that question. You're right. That's something to think about. It. Okay. Yes, Misha. What time can you sell the chametz until? So that brings us to our next step. Excellent. Each Misha is ahead of the game. Big time. Excellent. Now, it says like this. <clears throat> You're allowed to sell it to a goy. When? Up until the fifth hour, end of fifth hour. I, meaning in the sixth hour. Including? In the sixth hour, you're allowed to. I'm sorry. In the fifth hour, you're allowed to sell, sell, sell it to a goy. Good. Then it says. You're allowed to feed it to animals. So you can benefit from it. Good. Then it says, I skip just, I feel a harbe biyachet, even if there is a lot. Shivadai lo yochlenu kodem pesach. You're allowed to sell it to go even a lot right away. But then giving to an animal, you could, also you could give it in that hour, in, 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 the, in the fifth hour. But then you have to make sure that they finish the food so that nothing is left over. To go, you're allowed to. Sell in bulk, and even if it's gonna, it's gonna own it on pass no problem. Because once it's left your possession, it, it, you have nothing to do with it. But to animals, you have to give enough to uh, fin to to finish within one hour. The reference to selling means benefiting, profiting, or the reference to selling means selling away your possession for Passover and then buying it back. Is it like what do you mean by selling? You're just selling, selling, selling the actual chametz. Okay, regardless the physical, of, of whether physical you as a business or. Or just how everyone does it here, where you sell it. We're talking about right. we're talking about just selling just the actual selling. comments, selling. Right? Okay. right? Because we're giving an example of benefiting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now and then it says mm -hmm. and from the beginning of the and from the beginning of the sixth hour and on, asru gambana they prohibited in. And this is the answer to Misha's question: Why does it say in the calendar that you have to burn it by eleven forty? Mishnah explains over here that you want to burn your, your own chametz. You only 
doing a mitzvah of burning, destroying Hametz, it still, still belongs to you. But there is a rule in the Torah that once something is prohibited for me to utilize, to benefit from, for all intents and purposes, it's not really mine. So, Hametz and Pesach, even if I once owned it, once Pesach kicks in, I lose ownership of it. It's funny, on one end, Torah says, do not possess any Hametz and Pesach. And if I had held down to Hametz and Pesach, when I come to Shammai, Hashem is going to say, this Pesach, this one year Pesach, you had Hametz in your possession. But at the same time, because Hashem says you're not allowed to utilize Hametz, I don't have any practical benefit from it. So it's not, it's not like mine. And the only instance and the only concept why it's mine is for me to get, do an Avera. In other words, like this. Uh, Gemara says, Hamed Shal Pesach, once Pesach starts, is, does not really belong to a Jew. But Hashem puts it in his possession just to give him a punishment of owning Hametz. We only own it to get the punishment that we're owning Hametz. But really, we don't own Hametz. You getting this point? Yeah. In other words, like this. If, Hamed, if something is sur, if I cannot, let's say like this. Let's say my father says, I can't I'll prohibit you using your a smartphone. <coughs> so I can't touch it. I can't use it. I can't turn it on. I can't, I can't use it. So is it mine? So we're going to just take it away from me. It's not mine anymore. So that's it. Something that I cannot use, it's not mine. So it comes out that Hametz on Pesach, at certain points, leaves my possession. It's not mine anymore. Oh, yes, it's true that I will still, if I didn't get rid of it, I will get a veil of owning Hametz. Hashem is going to <laughs> still pay the check. He owned Hametz on Pesach. And on own means he did not get rid of it. But legally, I'm not owning it. So it says over here that since that's the case, when should I burn chametz to, to do a mitzvah of burning my chametz? Because it says, Ba'erev tashbitu et chametz. One has to destroy chametz on Erev Pesach. And it has to be my chametz that I... Uh, I want to get a mitzvah of burning it. So it has to belong to me. So at which point am I still able to do that mitzvah? And at which point I cannot do that mitzvah? I'm going to the start. If we're learning that... From 11 a.m., in the beginning of sixth hour, Hametz is asur ba'ana'a midrabanan. It's prohibited to derive benefit from it. Right. Is that the same as saying that I cannot burn it anymore and get a mitzvah? Yeah, it sounds that is benefit. Because burning Hametz is making doing a mitzvah with it. If, if, if I don't own it and I cannot benefit from it, I cannot, I'm not doing a mitzvah yeah, or burning it. So when it says in our calendar this year, burn chametz before 1140, 1140 happens to be, like on this chart, it's 11 a.m. Basically, beginning, end of fifth hour, beginning of sixth hour, when chametz becomes asur bahana, and our calendar is suggesting that I should burn it in the fifth hour. I could burn it earlier also, as long as I burn it before it becomes asur bahana. Asur to benefit from. <coughs> so I eat it before the end of fourth hour. And today's terms, it's 10.22. And I burn it before the end of fifth hour. Today's terms, it's 11.40. So now I understand what it says. And at this point, I think I lost some guys. Everything was good? Yeah. So now I understand what it says in the calendar. Eat before 10.22. And burn before 10 for Now, there's a question. What if a person did not actually burn it in the fifth hour? I mean, sorry, in the sixth, in the fifth hour before it became a surbahana. And now he finds himself in the sixth hour. According to Torah, you could still it still belongs to him. Mm -hmm. it only not his derabanan, midrabanan. And... A good point. However, there's a question if you're still doing a mitzvah. On Pesach, when you burn Hamas on Pesach, you find it. Um, 
So you're burning it for a different reason. You're burning it because you cannot have it in your possession. Can you throw it in the street? But did you do a mitzvah? You could throw it in the street also. Did you do a mitzvah biur chametz? So over here in the sixth hour, midarabonon it's not yours, but midaraita it's still yours. So midaraita you have mitzvah, but midarabonon the way they fashioned it that you should really do it in this hour, you don't have a mitzvah. So should you do it or not? The answer is you should do. It. Thank you very much. Shalom. Baruch Shikibanti. You should do it in this hour. If a person did not do it before the end of the sixth hour and now it's past Chatzot, in the seventh hour, then he doesn't have a mitzvah to burn it. He should just get rid of it. And uh, he could burn it also. But he lost the mitzvah of, of burning Hamas. Because now it's Asur Yom Deirat. Asur Yom Deirat. Excellent. The, Any questions on this? Yes, the being the being over on this on this over, so to speak. Uh, what's the punishment for that? What it's not correct. No, it's not correct. It's correct only like when Pesach starts and you and you have it in your possession. Correct is only on eating. Only on eating. Only on eating. Only eating. Right. If it's in your possession, okay. So correct is only on eating. So but over here we're talking about mitzvat ase, positive commandment of burning it. That's what we. Yeah, they so, throw so. you off the roof. So, right, right, when we sell the chametz, we have to specify uh, from what time it's actually going to be not ours. <laughs> Persians did, you know, like they gave people. No, we want to sell it before the beginning of sixth hour. I went to a goy. That's why so we have to burn it the rabbi has to sell it before, <laughs> before this time. No, on the contract, it has to specify that time. Uh, doesn't have to. As long as the actual sale took place uh, before this literally. time, physically, okay. it's uh, also how good. How do we know? Because we're like entrusted to a, to a rabbi. Like the the rabbi know this halacha very well. Yeah. So they do it at the last... Uh, mm -hmm. They do it at this time, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we burn it before they sell they, it. They can't do it too early because people are still using it. Mm -hmm. You see, every, everything is uh, uh, time, time constricted because you, you're still eating it in this hour, and you're using chametz, right? And it's still yours. It's still yours. You can't sell it then. When you're burning, it's still also still yours. Well, yes, yeah, you're burning your you property, right? Sell it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, you have one hour to really. <laughs> Rabbi has one hour to sell everyone's chametz. Mm -hmm. The fifth hour here. Wow. So it's even better to to burn it before the fifth hour. Because Rabbi is already going to be selling it at that time, so you. Might be like uh, with no, whatever chametz you're actually burning, you have in your plastic bag, the rabbi is not selling that. That's up to you. You didn't entrust oh, this to the rabbi. Okay, so you, you're selling whatever is left in the house. In the house is right. Uh, I see, I see, I see. Excellent, yeah. So now that your house is completely clean of chametz, what do you do? Uh, well, if today that you would on a Korban Pesach? Right. You prepare for the seder. seder. You prepare for the Seder. Very good. In other words, you accomplished the first half of getting rid of Hametz. And now you're real, your mind really switches to a different mode because you're busy, busy with first half. That's, that takes <coughs> one type of thinking. And then when you uh, Physically, already reached that point. You actually did get rid of chametz, and the chatzot kicks in. It's now so you don't have any chametz. You are more capable. You are more able, and you're suitable to actually prepare for seder. And it all starts in your head. So, and which thoughts should go through your mind when you prepare for seder? Well, that's shalom. What's the mitzvah? What's the mitzvah on the person? Of seder, magid. He says magid, because every father has a special mitzvah to tell his children about the story of going out from Israel. What if someone doesn't have children? Well, I had a question about selling comments. One last question. Okay. Um, so, like in our community, the rabbi is like, "Oh, just text us your. I mean, not text us. Email us where you want. Meaning the list of what you want sold at the property where it's located, right? Because like the rabbi of the community, he wants to email him the address of." Your home and where you know, meaning you're, you're making him a shaliyah to sell your comments. Isn't that something that has to be done in person, where you, like you pick up his pen or something, you exchange something? 
and, and you make a statement, I'm making yeah. my messenger too. So is it possible to do this via email? It's um, according to uh, someone's shita, yes. Uh, I don't do it that way. I always meet with the person who do Kenyan. Okay, All yeah, my rabbis did it like that, that way, but lately, yeah, but if you have like 300 with people, prolif you have proliferation of the technology, people just do it easy way. You it could even possible. sell it online also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't hold of it. Mm -hmm. Try to meet, meet your rabbi. It's also good to meet your rabbi in person once in a while. Uh, going on that question, you have somebody who is just elderly, can't leave the home. He signs a contract. Um, and you can be the shliach to make the Kenyan for him? Correct. You make him a shliach, yeah. yeah that's so, like, I, I take the contract, go to the rabbi, and then, like, I, uh, and then, like, uh, Contra just the contract means that he emails you like a paper to fill in like, like where he, Hametz is gonna be your address. Yeah, he's already contract, so yeah, like, right. and like my grandfather's case will write it out right. and then like bring it to the rabbi. Bring it to the rabbi and, and the, I, he, I, whatever I, rabbi tells you you're gonna do it. Yeah, rabbi knows how to do it. Uh, okay. It has to be written like a contract on, uh, on paper or it has to be written. Rabbi is you still need to know your, some information no, about you. No, for example, need your address. For example, if uh, my mom tells me, like, uh, sell for me as well, so over the phone, can, is that counted or...? Uh, yeah. is it, that's what we're talking about over here. When people are sick, yeah. we, um, yeah, we try to uh, do for them according to this sheet that allows us to do this, and we do it. Huh? What? No, I ever told you to use wrong. Next. But usually it's a person who owns, yeah, is own. able to sell. There's no shliach. I can't make a shliach to sell my house or sell anything. I, they have to speak to me. When, if they really want to buy it, they're going to need my signature and my credential. Well, you have an attorney sign for you. That's not true. Then I have to do a power, power attorney. Power attorney. Power attorney. Over here, you, I, it's just, okay, I'm making you a shliach. That's not power attorney. Uh-huh. Even power attorney has to be in person. Well, yeah, I mean. So uh, what, what, what does it work? How does it work then? It works through the following. It says, Zachin la adam yeah. In certain cases, we're allowed to save a person from doing an Aveira, even if he is not uh, present. We wouldn't be able to do it if it wouldn't be an Aveira to own Hametz. For example, to sell a house, no. To acquire anything, no. A person has to be there. Mm -hmm. But over here, as a Shat um, Chak, as a uh, 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 just to save a person if they express desire okay say, sell my chametz for me then we say there is this address this is the address this is where it is I have the address I have the person's uh, uh, okay to sell it and we sell it but only to save them it's like B'dievet we saved it but to say that this is how you should sell your chametz no, we save half religious Jews like that. We save uh, people who just wouldn't do it any any better way like that. We just uh, because our religion is a compassionate religion, and, and we try to help somebody. But to say that I could also uh, activate this this concept, no, it's not the best way. It's not the best way. You should do it with your presence, with your Kenyan in person. And not to rely on uh, the zakhin Adam Shalom of The rabbi is going to sell it for you. In, in this case, you become like your grandmother. She cannot go out from the house. If you emailed your rabbi, you texted your rabbi, but this is my address, and that's it. So it's like you're like a grandmother. She cannot get out. And he, your rabbi has to save you from only chametz on Pesach. We don't want to be in that position. When you, if you really, if, maybe you could do it if you have none. You don't really have chametz. You just have stuff that you want to sell just in case they have chametz, maybe then, yeah. But if you have real chametz, and you're not allowed to own it on, on, on Pesach, you want to use the best way to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. 
you want to solidify the sale, you want to make sale real, you want to, not just any type of sale is fine. Because, because according to those shitot that it doesn't work, you own in Chamez al Pesach. And there are shitot like that. You see, in Judaism, if there's one shita to exonerate you, we will activate it. If the one shita says that uh, this is a good sale, we will plug it in. But uh, you want to be, it's like a guy who was uh, keep so, somewhat keeping, keeping Torah his whole, his whole uh, life. Then he got to Shemayim, he went to Ganet, and they showed one mansion, another mansion. They see that the Tzadikim have very big, big, big uh, houses there. And then they give him uh, a small little shack, you know, on the, on, the, on the side of the town. So he says, what is this? This is Ganed? She says, there's one sheet that it's also Ganed. That it's also a match. It's also a match. Yeah, yeah. There's one sheet. Okay, so... Uh, He's also taking two cats. <laughs> You could, uh, yeah, yeah. You could t- go tell yourself <laughs> to calm yourself down. <laughs> yeah. At least I got a good location. Yeah, like I don't have anything else. But just, just the location. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys. What I asked you a question before we got into this discussion. What do you need to do to get yourself prepared for? What are you preparing yourself when it comes to seder itself? Like it. Cleaning, the cleaning, uh, Romanian rice. I would like to ask you a more deeper question okay. than just Check. cleaning. Well, someone asked me a question today. My children already learned about Pesach from their rabbi in school. What do I have to tell them? Why do they, they know already more than me? Why do I have to tell them anything? This uh, Pesach, we have to do also, uh, Arab Pesach, we have to do uh, Arab Pesach, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. Because, it right because it's right, Shabbat comes, on, comes along, yeah. Yeah, good. So, the mitzvah to recall the miracles on the night of Pesach. The 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 uh, I'll tell you a story that happened to me. The, the miracles, I'm sorry, the miracles. Yes, the excellent. Part. In other words, we can't just skip that night. We have to talk about it. Yeah. But what's the role of the father, let's say? I'll tell you my story. On my bar mitzvah, when I was, became bar mitzvah at 13 in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, my father called me. He said, son, today you're bar mitzvah. I, will, um, I would like to tell you anything about it, but I don't know. I know that it's supposed to have to fill in, but we don't have to fill in. I know that it's supposed to be called up to the Torah. We don't have a shul. We don't have a synagogue. We don't have a Torah. I know that you're supposed to learn a lot of things, but I don't know what the Torah to teach you. There's only one thing I know, is that uh, you're a Jew, and you don't ever tell anybody you're not a Jew. That's what, that's what he felt. My father felt. I don't know where he got it from. That you're supposed to always keep be proud, be proud, and know that you're a Jew. Now, later on, I found out that there is a halacha in Shulchan Aruch like that, that a Jew is not allowed to tell, say that he's not a Jew. He was a Mongolian. So that. Uh, what if your life depends on it? What do you mean? Like the Moranos, like Moranos, or something like as a hunting Jews or whatever. Yes, you know your life is threatened by uh, tonight. Um, Let's say you're a man. It's still not allowed. Believe it or not, it's still not allowed. What if you're going somewhere that's not Kiddush Hashem to be there? What? What if you're being somewhere that's not Kiddush Hashem to be there as a Jew? <laughs> that's the more practical question. I have a little Nazi about to kill me. So you're asking, you're asking, your, I'll say Michael, you're asking question number one or question number two? Are, are you asking A or B? Everybody else is not here. Listen, you, you're really bombarding me with questions over here. But this is Halakhan Shkhanar. Now let's see. The answer is don't do something that's going to be overtly non Jewish and then still uh, maintain that you're Jew. If you, I don't know, do something that Jews should not be doing, then uh, hopefully the fact, because you're not allowed to present yourself as a guy, you won't do it in the first place. 
So you want to do it. So, so the Allah is not allowed to make yourself a guy, not allowed to proclaim yourself to be a guy, and if uh, uh, and therefore then do, don't do all these things. Right. Any more questions? Right. I have to, I'd like to move on with my story, by the way. So besides market, what else are we supposed to do? I'm in the middle of the story. Oh, yeah. That summer, my, uh, my parents sent me to camp. And uh, for some reason, on the first day of camp, even before I entered the, too much into the camp, I was just standing in the gate with my bag. All of a sudden, a huge, huge, huge um, group of uh, boys surrounded me. They wanted to know one thing. What do they want to know? Are you Jewish? <laughs> are you Jewish? Are you Jewish? Uh, <laughs> so I definitely something told me it's not Chabad who want to put it. Oh yeah. there was one time I forgot Tefillin and I found the Chabad came over to me. It was like wow. It's a dick like you. Tefillin came to me. Tefillin comes to you. Yeah. If Michael doesn't go to Ktivu, the hill, the hill comes to him. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> now, so I thought, I was looking at these guys and I thought to myself, I think I know what they are trying to figure out. Should I really tell them the truth? Then I remembered my father's words that I would not say that I'm a Jew. A lot of Jews, so I told them I'm a Jew. And obviously that whole summer experience was not very, very good to put it mildly and um, <clears throat> but Baruch Hashem I survived but I believe that it's because of that statement then in camp is what later on when I came to America because of that statement because of that bold step I went to yeshiva I started learning I started uh, uh, being a proud Jew I wanted to know everything why because you have to take a step towards Judaism. You have to sacrifice something. So, as we will see, that if your father tells you something, then you're ready to really put your life into danger for it. If your rabbi told you or your teacher in school, <coughs> then not necessarily you're going to take such a drastic steps. But it has to be someone who is very close to you, that you trust them. A lot. So, therefore, our job on Pesach is to tell our children about going out from Egypt. And uh, no one else could do our job for us. And, well, for those who don't have children and they come in to someone else's say that, to their parents say that, then our job is to listen. We have to be the, in the role of those who are listening to the story and allowing our parents to say the story. And it's just as important because no one would be listening. Like over here, if no one, if here no one was listening to me, I wouldn't be able to give a sure. It's because you can't, because you're listening. You are just as much partners in my sure, just like I am. We are equal partners. If not for you, I wouldn't be able to teach this. Well, what if you have kids under two years old? They don't understand you. You have to tell them on their level, like... Uh, play a game or crawl on the, on the floor with them like a frog, you know, during the, the makat tzifarde uh, or something like that. So, and uh, a paro, uh, act like a paro, but then eventually they will understand it better. And then the big question is, how much of the said that do we have to say? How long does it take? And the answer is that there are certain parts of the said that are very crucial. We have four cups of wine, and each one of them we say part of the Haggadah, and the first one we say Kiddush, and the second one we say the whole Magid, and the third one we bench, and the fourth one we say Allah. But when it comes to uh, Magid, the actual Haggadah, when we, it says in the Halacha that one has to, of course, ask Manishtana. We all Bukhari and say Halach Maniya, we pick up Gada. Uh, that's on, on uh, uh, so to speak, um, undebatable. Uh, um, part of Agada, then Manishtana, every single kid has to ask. Um, then Avadim Hainu is the, is the answer. After that, there is uh, some Psukim, which uh, Poskim say that if you didn't say them, it's okay. But when uh, there's a Minhag, when we're talking about Ten Makot, then everyone has to tune in again. 
Uh, after that, there is a statement, the Rebbe did not say three things. Pesach, Matzah, Maror, he did not fulfill the mitzvah. There are those things again, that part is also crucial. Yeah, yeah. no, an explanation also. No explanation, because right after that, there is an explanation. So you have to read and translate those parts also. Because the idea is to uh, 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 console, contemplate on the Pesach, Matzah Maror. There's a lot to talk about over there. Pesach, for example, is the mitzvah of Pesach and Hashem jumping over our houses and saving the first, our firstborn, which was triggered to going out. Matzah means that we were saved because that's how we went out from Egypt. It's a Matzah is symbolism of... Uh, um, going out of Egypt, we did not. We, we went out so fast that it, our bread did not become leavened. And maror is the bitterness. There is a question: Why matzah before maror? First, we were enslaved. First, we tasted the bitterness. Then we were freed. So maybe we should do it the other way around. Maybe we should eat first the maror and then matzah. And the answer is that after we were freed, we realized. That even the bad parts in Egypt, the, the, the negative, was actually for our benefit. So only once you tasted the freedom, you got the matzah, you got the Torah, you see that uh, even maror was also bad. So it has to be in that, that uh, sequence. In that sequence. And at the end, we have, obviously we say bracha, asher galanu, and then we have to eat matzah. Uh, we give it to uh, those who are sitting with us. Then Suda, and then Afikoman, the last part, everyone knows about it. But the halacha is that one is not allowed to eat anything after Afikoman. And uh, we fill up uh, the third course, bench on it, and right away fill up the fourth course, and say halal on it. Swaradim, don't do course shalaliyahu. Uh, don't open the door either, but if you have that minhag, it's totally fine. No problem at all. And the uh, uh, halal also has to be with the big simcha. The big simcha, and if a person is able to also sing the songs like Echad Miyadeh, Echad Miyadeh, that's great. Daniel, Daniel wants to say something. <laughs> is that song like uh, uh, must be said? The last song? Yeah, my, my family always says it. Oh, you have to say it. You must it's very say. hard to say that song. But hopefully you're gonna have some people with you. You're gonna be by somebody, no, right? Probably in the city, yeah, in, uh, Queens. in Queens, right? So there, there is young guys, young. They'll, don't worry, they'll all be singing. My also my family. Everyone is coming to my home. Uh, the kids, uh, my son, my sons, they love Pesach with us. Um, but it's all, again, the reason why we made this class is to rehearse. We, we learned the same things last time also. But you forget over the course of the year, you got to put yourself into the mode. you got to focus, and you have to understand that you're doing something. Tonight we delineated that we have two phases. We have first step, then we have a second step, and each one has a special focus. And the second step is actually harder than the first one, because the first one is physical. You just get rid of the comments. The second one, it has to do with your more with your head, and, and then there's a lot to do. You have to relate to the people around you. You have to. There's a lot of parts. Like you have to say the story of uh, once, and also feel good, feel happy within the presence of your family. Uh, everything according to the head of the house. If you are grumpy and upset, everyone's gonna be grumpy and upset. But if you are happy and upbeat, then even if there are people. Uh, in the bad mood around you, they're going to get into a good mood only How because of you. How much do we have to eat? Okay. We have to eat the kazai. Okay. Kazai, you just picture uh, olive and uh, eat that amount. Some people have big assurance, but my rabbi held that you pick, picture a big olive. Uh, you had two kazai team in the beginning, mm-hmm. two big kazai mm-hmm. team, and then uh, if you come on one kazai. So that's a little more than half a ramah, right? Check the, by the way, when you use the, the make a say there, follow what it says in the Haggadah. Get it in English, uh, Haggadah. Do you know a good English Haggadah uh, or I use Hebrew. <laughs> There's, definitely there is something. Maybe ask, speak to Michael. I have a very thick, I got a very thick English.
all explanations. But question is, does it explain to you the steps, what to do when? Yeah, so that's important to have that, I got that. Okay, and may everyone have a very good Pesach. Thank you very much. Maybe we get together the Pesach. Garabatai, by the way, we're learning here every Monday night. At some point, we're going to make a big plov and shashlik in Marine Park, in Narek's backyard. I already spoke to him today about it. Close to La Bahama. But you got to come. On Mondays. However, next Monday it's close to Pesach. We're not getting together. And the following Monday we're also not getting together. Right. And the following Monday. After Pesach. After Pesach we're restarting. I'll tell you when. So three weeks. I'll tell you when. Any more? Yes, Benny. So, um, see you later, guys. Uh, some people don't eat at uh, a certain point. A lot of men. I said the last time you can eat. Uh-huh. I, I remember learning right. right. so uh, that afterwards, yes. Yeah. So, right. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, right. 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 So, uh, Rabbis, so you, you make sushi on this? Or? Uh, 1, uh, 12.58. Oh, okay. Two minutes to one. Rabbis, that's okay. Uh, so, 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 where are you going to be? Well, we're all getting together in Seagate. And, uh, we're going to get the shul downstairs because there's like 14 people, a lot of guests coming along. And I was like, it's too much. So we reserve places in the shul. Nice. And they have a wonderful meal. They have matzah and they have... A table for us, 14 people, you know, so like they serve hot food and, and uh, you know, matzah and this and that. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's just a lot simpler, you know. Excellent. And you're there also, you're sleeping, it's very good. Yeah, yeah, no. You I walk, mean, it's, walk it's, over. It's, it's, yeah, I'm like, not like three minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I do. I did Kenya when I was down in Cross Park, because I was still alive for Rabbi Kiano, the Rabbi Kiano. But on the old girl, Ruchko, we didn't want to be there. 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 Ruchko, we didn't want to be there.